Hey, this is Jim with Edgestream TV. In this segment, we are talking with Peyton from Panasonic. Now, you may know the Panasonic name from their large family of Pro AV PTZ cameras. They have a PTZ camera in every uh, part of the lineup that fits in every application that you're going to see installed in schools, venues, stadiums all over the country. Well, Panasonic also has an excellent production system now with Kairos, and that's why I invited Peyton on the show to talk to us about Kairos and some of the live production capabilities. Peyton, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jim, for having me. Yeah, I'm, I'm Peyton. I'm the Kairos product manager. And uh, what we've done a lot with the Kairos platform is really being able to make it an affordable and easy to use system for people to uh, kind of really be able to provide excellent and creative uh, solutions for their uh, uh, for their broadcast or for their stream or some sort of uh, creative look for their uh, specific school's application. So kind of the traditional approach for a t typical you know video switcher is you know SDI input into FPGA based type hardware. And so what Panasonic has done has we've created this platform called Keros and we're using, IP transport and SDI transport into a software defined GPU based system, which gives people some incre incredible flexibility instead of having to be locked into some traditional hardware based constraints. So within kind of the Keros ecosystem, uh, we have a, a base server that allows uh, uh, a reliable interface for people to come and, and use the Keros system inside of their uh, inside of their market. So on the right hand side, you'll see the Keras Creator uh, software. That's really a simple and easy to use software that interfaces back into the Keras core that allows you to build out their show for any kind of uh, scenario. So you might be trying to produce a, uh, an esports event or some sort of internal production for uh, you know an, a town hall for for your school. You know that's really where the power of Keras uh, comes into play. Um, We've, we have all kinds of different control options that make it simple and easy to use uh, for people that uh, really kind of expand the capability of, of what, uh, what you might think as a traditional you know, video switcher. You know, we have the advanced in compact control panel, but a lot of people are just using a stream deck. So it makes it uh, familiar tools that uh, give you the ability to be able to cut different cameras, mix these different effects together to provide and produce an excellent show uh, with it for your for your broadcast. And Peyton, I think that's one of the big advantages when we talk about the cable system is the scalability and the flexibility of the workflows. Everything from the different model of core that you would select to drive your production to the different control options, everything from a stream deck all the way up to the advanced full-size control panels, to even some touchscreen controls that are available through Keros Control as well. And then you have the Keros Creator, which can be run not only on a local machine, but also on remote machines, allowing you to take advantage of production resources, even if they're not physically on location at the school where that production is being done, right? That's exactly right. So because it's a software inter interface, I can be anywhere in the world. I don't need that specific, you know, core or the brain of the system to be with me at all times. That could be back on campus and I could be anywhere in the world with my with my software control interface, you know, talking back to that core. You, you mentioned the touch control multi view. One of the great things about the touch control multi view is it's streaming back a multi view for me to be able to actually just touch on the touch screen to be able to cut my show or fire my macros or my transitions uh, to be able to seamlessly integrate into, into the Keros ecosystem. And that really is a simple interface for, for people that are familiar with, you know, just touching a touch screen or I just want to put one camera here or there. It, it really makes things a lot simple and, and, and easy to understand. And I think that's one of the things we run into all the time in the education market, especially, is giving someone the level of control that they need for the production. You might have a full production crew on staff or students that you want to train on how to do the productions. And putting the full-size control panel in front of them is going to become an essential tool. 
But then to drive a simple operation with something like a Stream Deck or a touch control interface that that production team sets up for any teacher to walk into that production center now really allows you to create an environment to take advantage of whatever resources are available wherever they are. Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. Especially with this like layer based operation, you know, these interfaces are very familiar for people to use. So, you know, a lot of students are used to using, you know, Photoshop, even teachers are used to using Photoshop. And even, you know, when building out a PowerPoint, you know, there's this idea of like, you know, layer stock stack on, on top of layers, you know, the highest layer, you know, takes priority. So it's, it's an easy interface for people to understand and it allows them to use, you know, a tool, their computer uh, that they're used to using to be able to build out their show. Awesome. And th that's exactly what you're talking about with that layer based operation. And really, it's a different way of thinking of the traditional MEs that you would get yeah. in a live production. It almost is bleeding into the way a graphic production is done in something like Photoshop or After Effects, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, it, it removes the restriction of this like idea that there's MEs or or keyers, a set amount of keyers per ME or a set amount of MEs per system. With inside of Keros, you know, there's it's a we call it, you know, virtually unlimited, you know, scenes or keyers because it doesn't really matter. It's all about GPU processing. So there's no physical MEs or or keyers set for each one. So it, it really just allows you to right mouse click copy and paste another layer all within one one scene and you can even see in the example there you know there's like eight or nine or ten layers and it can go you know way beyond way beyond that and that allows people to just not have to really think through their show necessarily they they can just add another layer and stack it on top just like you think you know a traditional uh video switcher would operate no it, that's not really how it works within keros that is how it works and that and that makes things a lot more flexible especially for, for people that might not be familiar with a traditional uh, workflow. And I also think that's that same capability that allows you to drive non-traditional displays. So if you have digital signage, if you have a sports venue at the school that is using a banner array across a section of the stadium, uh, KROS can very easily send an output feed to these non-traditional -dis non display formats to get the right content to any of those displays very quickly, right? Yeah, that's right. So we have a built-in Canvas functionality. And so really that allows us to not have to stitch MEs together. You actually just type in the resolution that you wanna work in. And I can work in that, in that, canvas, uh, in that canvas raster natively with inside of Keros and not have to actually even worry about an, an additional screen's processor. I can just do that all internally inside of Keros. So if you want to do that vertical based, you know, uh, you know, TV in a vertical base or LED walls that I want to drive, or even like Instagram and in like a nine by 16 type format, I can do all that directly from Keros and I can assign those outputs, you know, directly within the system. And that really kind of unlocks a lot of additional flexibility with, especially with different resolutions coming into the system. Not only can I output different resolutions on a per output base, but per output basis, but inputs coming into the system, I can mix and match those. So it doesn't really matter what I'm actually bringing into the system. It could be SDI, 2110, NDI, SRT. It doesn't really matter. Keras will take it in. I don't have to really use up down cross converters in addition to this it, Keros just does it for me so that you know saves on reliability additional hardware that is needed and it really kind of makes it way more affordable even to kind of get into the system and use formats that people are are used to using you know uh we actually have a use case where um you know uh ferris state university um they're using Keros for their esports program and, you know, okay. mixing and matching these formats coming in, you know, they have RGB signals, you know, they have uh, webcams, they also have their computer, you know, screen capture. It makes things uh, very, very simple for different, all these different computers have, you know, different resolutions and formats that they're trying to, you know, natively bring in. This would not be very easy with a traditional, very, uh, traditional switcher. You know, this, this allows them to simply bring those sources in not even just, you know, for their esports program, but even like facility wide. So if I have, you know, sources 
coming in from across the, of the entire facility, they can bring those directly inside of Keros, all, you know, whether it's IP or SDI. Um, it makes things very, very simple to just bring those signals in and then the students use it. So it, this, it's kind of student run and, um, you know, they have instructors, but they're they're getting to use, you know, professional broadcast switching equipment that they could use out in the industry with their esports program, but also be able to understand and kind of, you know, get around that a traditional learning curve of, you know, this is how a traditional video switcher operates. Now I can actually just have it in a simple, easy to use interface and bring those signals in and they can mix and match their their show and they host all these kinds of uh, esports tournaments there. I love that you have the esports case study because I know that layered format in taking ultra high definition, high frame rate video quality of the game being played and pairing that with what could typically be a webcam of the player in action. And now combining that together to create that esports production has something that has been challenging in a lot of different workflows. And Kairos really does allow you to do it pretty seamlessly. Yeah, yeah, it, it really makes it quite easy. And there's no additional really cost into that up down cross conversion. You know, it's all just built in the system. So it, you know, if it just your native, you know, frequency typically has to match on a, a traditional video switcher, Kairos. It doesn't really matter. I can just bring in anything that I want, and it'll just take it and and do the and do the up down cross for you uh, without any additional licensing costs. So that's really really quite flexible. Um, a lot of people too with their you know these multi venue type deployments, it kind of makes it easier for them to start you know scaling their production uh, with you know one single Keros core because of this. I can bring any signal in. And have this like unlimited, you know, virtually unlimited, you know, uh, scenes and keyers per my system. Now I can actually do multi-production across one single core. So now, you know, I'm I'm showing kind of like the sport field type, uh, you know, example here. But this, you know, could apply to you know multiple classrooms or or multiple different venues across campus, or even for your you know athletic department, you know, one core could you know uh, kind of operate multiple different venues um, from a single system. And that saves you a significant amount of cost. Typically, you'd have to have three different you know video switchers or, or video playback or uh, you know scalers and that type of thing per, per, per venue. Now I can do everything from one single core and I could buy multiple control panels to be able to talk back to that core and kind of lock those control panels down so no one's you know stepping on one another. And I can just operate each individual, you know, sport field or venue uh, or classroom or, or uh, you know, auditorium independently from one another and utilize one single core to be able to, to pull this off. And, you know, the question that comes up all the time when we talk to the academic market is budget. By having the flexibility and scalability of allowing multiple venues, multiple campuses, multiple applications to access that core, it allows you to spread that budget where you can now have an esports production like we showed at Ferris, or we can have a sports production and dip into the pocket of the athletic department. Yeah. We can we can talk to the staging productions and take cameras and have that communicate back to the core so we can do the staging events. Uh, we really can take this system and scale it to take advantage of different funds available to all kind of group that purchase and production capability together, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even the um, even the online team, we actually have a university that's using Keros for their like uh, online uh, based thing for the for the teachers. Actually, the teachers come in and they just have a simple interface like a Stream Deck that they can basically control. You know, a very very powerful video switcher. They have really no idea what they're controlling. But it's, it's really just a simple way for them to create content and, and engaging content for their online, you know, uh, classrooms uh, very, very easily and simply inside of studios. Well, they also, you know, could use those studios for other recordings and other things. And they and they do that, you know, they student led, you know, teaching of, you know, broadcast control systems. But, you know, even the teachers are using it for facility uh, in the facility for the for the online, you know, the online school or or type uh, based uh, workflow, which which really allows 
people to start thinking through, okay, wait, I can actually use this one system for multiple things all at the same time. And from anywhere. And, and that's and, the remote integration, right? Is really yeah. you can set that up that you can provide access over the network to that core to give that remote production capability from anywhere, right? Yeah, it's one of the powerful things of Keros, you know, uh, it basically has these built-in, you know, streaming encoders and decoders and, you know, using our, our camera-based systems, our PTZs and our, you know, like CX350, 3X, uh, CX370, new cameras that have, you know, built-in SRT, you know, I can have a core locally to me at, at my house if I want to and just stream these cameras directly back to my core without having to have all these additional encoders and decoders and that type of thing. But I could also remotely control the core from anywhere as well. So I could have a core on-prem somewhere while also having a control panel uh, with me or even just the software interface, like we talked about with the touch control software. I can easily cut a show that way remotely. Or even if I wanted the physical control panel with the stream deck or something that I want, some sort of physical button, I can do that. And, and just streaming back those multi-views, we, we do it all the time. Actually, um, I know Glenn is based in, in Texas and you know y'all have one in, in your uh, main headquarters at Broadfield you know Glenn's remotely controlling you know the Keros core to be able to do demos and that's exactly how I do demos for customers as well Keros is living in Hoffman and States and I'm here in Orlando Florida and I can actually stream back all my multi views and be able to cut basically a, a real world show uh, for for the customer and show off the interface and that prevents me from having to bring a bunch of hardware around with me which really kind of opens up the flexibility of remote capability, which we just introduced um, with our new latest version, HTML5, you know, graphic ingest, which really kind of opens up, you know, an additional component to, uh, to the, uh, to the remote production. So, you know, like this Flowix, you know, I can now natively ingest Flowix directly into our Keros painter, a graphics engine, which lives inside of Keros. And I, all I have to do is type in the URL from Flowix or Singular Live or whatever, whatever platform HTML5, you know, platform I'm using, it doesn't really matter. You just type in that URL, even if I just want to pull a YouTube video and type in the URL or copy and paste it. And that allows me to now quickly and easily access those types of tools that would work extremely well in a remote environment and really kind of bring my production uh, scale up. Um, all, all because of, of uh, the software-defined platform that Keros brings. It, absolutely. And, you know, we talked about the demos. Uh, we do have Glenn Seaman, who is our sales engineer, um, fully trained, certified, has a system running in Texas. We have a system running here in New York, and we have a nationwide network of system integrators and installers that are very familiar with the Keros systems, and they can help pair you with the right core, and the right environment for all of your production needs. One of the things that I especially like about the Keros production systems is that it is incredibly flexible to work with what you're doing in your school. If you have a production room that's doing broadcast quality news or even mobile productions and you're getting involved in ST2110, Keros supports the entire ST2110 ecosystem. Uh, Cairo supports NDI, any AV over IP, uh, direct SDI connections from your traditional cameras, uh, Panasonic Pro AV, PTZ cameras, camcorders, you name it, there is a workflow that's available and we can definitely help shape that with you. Uh, Peyton, I know that you and the team at Panasonic are also available to kind of show up and demo this stuff as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Just... Uh... Talk to your local sales rep, talk to your local uh, reseller. Uh, we'll be able to uh, help connect and, and be able to uh, give you a demo. And, and, you know, you're not going to be on your own, too, with the system. You know, it might seem super intimidating at times. You know, we'll be able to go on site, train you, um, and, and be able to walk you through the process of, of uh, uh, creating a, a, great, a great system for, uh, for your education market. 
Absolutely. If you have any questions, give us a call at 800-323-2325. We're happy to help answer any questions. Refer you to a local Panasonic dealer in your area. Set up a demo. Even get you to download that Kairos Creator software so you can even play with the interface and see how some of that GPU acceleration and everything else works. Peyton, thank you again for joining us on Edge Stream TV. Thank you, Jim.